Hey guys, Mike here from Lunch Money Comics, and I have for you today a comic book roundup video. See, whenever I go out hunting for comic books, I film with the intent of making an entire video based on my experience in the comic books that I get. But a lot of times I only go out and get like one or two comic books, and there's just not enough footage to make an entire video in its own right. On top of that, I get comic books from lots of places that I don't film, like online or a trade at a comic book store, or even such strange and unusual places as an auction house. More on that in a bit. And all that ever ends up happening with those comic books is I just post a picture or two on Instagram and I don't get to talk about them on my channel. Which is why every once in a while I like to do one of these roundup videos where I talk about the best comic books I've gotten over the last month or so that have not yet made an appearance on my channel. Now some of these have footage attached to them which I will interject into the video, others do not, but the one thing they all have in common, they're all really cool and I'm excited to share them with all of you. So. Before I show you these comic books, if you like this stuff and you want to support the channel, please go down, hit that like button, leave me a comment, share my channel with others who might like it, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and follow me on Instagram under Lunch Money Comics IG. And if you do follow me on Instagram, you may have gotten a sneak peek of some of the books I'm going to show you today. So the first things I want to show you guys aren't comic books at all. They're actually toys. Now, lots of people ask me to like show more toys and collectibles on my channel, but I don't like doing it unless they're sort of, well, either comic book themed or they're something that I feel like comic book lovers would like. Like, like nerdy things, right guys? Like Star Wars or Voltron. But in this case, the toys I'm going to show you are absolutely comic book themed and they are perfect to whet your appetite for this video. So I was in Sturbridge, Massachusetts at an indoor flea market, basically a big indoor consignment shop where different vendors rent out a booth and they can sell whatever they want in there. And there are lots of comic books here. I go here quite often. And uh, the day I was there, I did look at lots of comics, but there was nothing I needed to take home. But then I stumbled upon a booth that was full of toys, not just any toys, all comic book related toys, both DC and Marvel. And there were a lot of action figures from the 90s still in the package. Now, these hold a very near and dear place in my heart because when I was younger, I didn't have a ton of money. I only had a couple of these figures, but I had a friend who had all of the Marvel action figures. His dad bought all of them for him. I'd go over his house, we would draft our teams and they would, you know, pretend fight. Now I have no idea what happened to my figures from when I was a kid. So when I stumbled upon these in the store, I had all sorts of nostalgia feels, especially for the X-Men ones. So yes, there were lots of DC and Marvel, but specifically there were several X-Men figures from the early 90s. They were $10 each and I just bought one of every single X-Men one. So what am I talking about? Well, they are these, and I'm going to start with everyone's favorite X-Man from the early 90s, the Raging Cajun himself, uh, Gambit. So you can see here, this is from 1992. Uh, this is a Gambit uh, with kicking action. Uh, I actually had this figure when I was a kid. Again, I have no idea what happened to it, and it's very rare that I don't know what happened to my toys, but this one was missing. I'm very happy to replace it in the package. Definitely holding on to this one. We also have a Bishop, uh, complete with quick draw action and awesome 90s mullet. Then we have Storm, I think I had her as well, uh, with a special light up lightning on her body there, very cool. Then we have Banshee with special uh, sonic scream, he has a whistle basically on him. Then we have, this one's very interesting, we have a Wolverine as a Weapon X, uh, this is the 5th edition Wolverine, and the original uh, paint job on this Wolverine is black with gold accents, but you see here, this is a KB Toys exclusive where he's dark green with copper accents. So uh, pretty cool. Not as cool as the black uh, costumed one, but I thought it was kind of neat. And last but certainly not least is this one. This is a Professor X. He's huge uh, and he has secret compartments in his chair. That's the big thing that he does. So um, like I said, guys, these are all $10 in the package and uh, I could not live without these. Now, I don't know what I'm going to do with all of these. I'm definitely keeping a couple like the Gambit. Absolutely. Some of these I might resell. I don't know. But until I decide what to do, they're definitely going to have a prominent place somewhere in this room here. I'm going to display them quite proudly um, and I'm going to remember the early 90s very fondly whenever I do. Okay, so let's move on to some actual comic books now, but definitely staying in the realm of indoor flea market consignment shops. So I was in Deerfield, Massachusetts at an antique store, but again, more of a consignment shop, lots of different vendors. And I've been there many times and they have nice antiques and toys, but I've never seen comic books until this last time. There was a vendor, and I don't know if it was a new vendor or an old vendor who just got comic books, but they had several short boxes full of comics as well as some nicer ones behind a glass case. Now, there were some really good comics in there. I saw Thundercats number one, a whole bunch of like Ms. Marvel number ones, some Killing Jokes, some Watchmen, all great stuff. 
The problem is they were all listed exactly at fair market value, like exactly as if this was a comic book store or they had just checked like sold prices on eBay. And there's nothing wrong with that, guys. Absolutely. It's just that there were no real deals to be had and you can't negotiate when the person's not there. There were lots of comic books I liked, but not worth the money I saw them listed at, except for two. And this next one right here, I saw it and I absolutely had to have it because it has a very special place in my heart. What comic book am I talking about? Well, it is this, Firestorm number no. one from 1978, written by Jerry Conway, art by Al Milgram, who I got to meet a few weeks ago. And of course, this is the first appearance of Firestorm, the nuclear man. Now he's a very interesting character in that he's actually two people merged into one. He's actually a high school student and a nuclear physicist merged into one nuclear powered superhero by being in a nuclear blast, because comics. And uh, yeah, you know, he wasn't super popular. I mean, this first series here didn't last very long. He did join the Justice League, but I would say he's definitely like a C-tier DC character. So listen, I make no secret, I am primarily a Marvel collector. Why then does this sort of obscure first appearance of a DC character have such a special place in my heart? Well, the reason is when I was eight years old, I had my first foray into comic books. A family friend gave me a whole box of comics and it was probably a hundred books in there, 80% of which were DC. And most of those were Flash and Superman, but there was one copy of Firestorm number one. Now, I was a pretty poor kid. I didn't have a lot of good comic books. So when I started getting into them and like trading with my friends and stuff, my claim to fame, the best part of my collection was this, Firestorm number one. I would show this off and be like, I get the first appearance of Firestorm. So this for a long time, guys, was like my best comic book. Until years later, I was in a local comic book store and they had some pretty cool comic books on the back wall that I wanted, including a Secret Wars number eight, you know, Origin of Spidey's Black Suit. Not that one, a different copy. And uh, yeah, I wanted it and this place was amenable to trades. So for whatever reason, I decided I can let go of some of my DC comics, right? I wanted to more focus on what I wanted from Marvel. So I went home and grabbed a whole bunch of my DC comics and brought them back to trade. Uh, the other reason I was okay trading these comics is because they were kind of beat up. The person I got them from, you know, clearly loved these books. They were very well read, but they also wrote on all of them. Like in the barcode, they wrote a number with like a marker, like whatever number it was in their collection. So although there was some good stuff in there, like some good Bronze Age Batman in this book, um, I was okay parting with them because I didn't feel like the condition was great and there were books I wanted more. Still, as I let this little mini collection go, I had the reservations on one book, and it was this one because at one point in time, it was like the blue chip of my collection. I said, you know what? That's fine. I'll just make sure I replace it someday with a better copy that, you know, isn't written on. So here I was in Deerfield, Massachusetts, and I find this beautiful copy of Firestorm number one staring right back at me. And I had to have it. Uh, it's in pretty high grade. There's only one small blemish on it. Now, I think the vendor was having like a 10% off sale. So I got it for around 25 bucks, which I think is exactly what it's worth. But it's kind of priceless to me because I tell you guys, when I look at this, I get the same feeling I did when I was like nine or 10 years old. Um, it's definitely not the best comic book in my collection now, but I still kind of feel like it is. It has a very special place. So I'm very happy to add Firestorm number one back into my comic book collection. So this vendor also had a couple of short boxes full of pretty decent comic books, but again, nothing I thought was really worth taking home for the price they were asking, except for this one. This was priced really low and totally worth picking up. And it's this, this is Blue Beetle number one from 1986. And this is the first Blue Beetle series published by DC Comics. So Blue Beetle is a really old character. He goes way back into the golden age and was published by lots of different publishers. Uh, as a matter of fact, I just found this out for a short period of time, he was actually published out here in Western Massachusetts. Fun little fact. Um, before mostly being published by Charlton Comics for most of his existence until the early 80s when DC Comics got the license to Blue Beetle and incorporated him into the DC Universe after Crisis on Infinite Earths. So this is the first ongoing Blue Beetle series. Now there are multiple different people who took on the mantle of Blue Beetle. This is the Ted Cord version, but there is a movie coming out starring the Jaime Reyes version of Blue Beetle. I just saw the trailer the other day. And evidently there's a rumor that there is someone in that movie by the name of Conrad Carapax, AKA uh, the Indestructible Man. Well, this book here happens to be his first appearance. So whether or not that's true, I still think it's a cool book to pick up because of its significance to DC. Also because Blue Beetle had a longtime friendship and partnership with Booster Gold, which also has a TV show coming out. So you never know if he's gonna show up uh, in some other way, shape or form other than the movie. Still, I'm happy to pick this up because it was listed at $4. Uh, so with a discount, it was like $3 and change. Very happy to pick up the first Blue Beetle in DC Comics. 
So in the beginning of this video, you heard me mention something about getting comic books at an auction house. It's true. A little while back, a buddy of mine, Josh, contacted me and said, hey man, you gotta check out this auction that's happening this weekend near your house. There's some really great comic books there. And he sent me a link to the auction house's website. Well, I went to it and I was blown away. It was tons of gold and Silver Age books, mostly Silver Age Marvel, my bread and butter, and the books that were there were incredible. I mean, each lot of comic books they were auctioning off was like a mini run of like, you know, 10 X-Men books or some early Amazing Spider-Man or Thor, and they were almost all keys. In fact, like one of the Spider-Man sets was basically started with Amazing Spider-Man 50, you know, first appearance of the Kingpin, and it was high grade, like a 7.0 kind of thing. And there was, you know, a first appearance of Silver Surfer, first Black Panther, just incredible stuff, guys. And I responded back to Josh, I'm like, hey man, I can't afford any of this stuff. And he said, no, no, just go. He's like, there's a lot of like friends of ours who are gonna be there. It'll be a fun time. Even if you don't buy anything, it'll be some pretty good footage you can show on your channel. I was like, all right, I guess I'll go. So I did, I showed up half an hour before it started and I was even more blown away to see that like you could handle these comic books. They weren't bagged or boarded. You could just pick them up, look at them, inspect them. You know, there were guys smelling them and all the way up until the moment the auction started. So that was pretty amazing. And I started like filming some footage and then I said, you know what? I'm just gonna get a paddle. Who knows, you know, maybe I can kind of sneak in and get something good. Well, the auction started and uh, we kind of knew what kind of auction it would be when the first like big comic books went up for sale because there were basically two parties <laughs> that were buying all the big stuff. There's a group of guys up near the front and there was someone on the phone kind of like counterbidding each other. And basically the rest of us kind of resigned. Uh, you know, we're not gonna get the really expensive stuff, but still we were patient. And whenever anyone didn't bid on a lot of comic books, we would, you know, one of us would throw the paddle up and win it. And that's actually what I did. I won two lots of comic books. In fact, the first one, I had no idea what I won because they just called it out. I saw no one bid. I threw my paddle up for $20 and I got it, and I kind of joked with those guys like, what did I win? <laughs> Nobody knew. So it was still kind of fun. I'm like, nice little surprise at the end there to see what I actually won. Now, I had a great time. I thought it was a great experience. There was some fantastic looking books. Again, I wasn't planning on filming, but then I got home and I was looking at my footage. And I'm like, man, this would be a great, great video to show all of you. There was just one problem. I never asked for permission. It was definitely private property. And again, I wasn't planning on making a video, so I didn't really think to ask. But still, I said, well, let me see if I can even make a video. So I started editing it up. I was very careful about privacy. I was, you know, editing out people. I was blurring out faces, you know, I was being very respectful of this establishment. And I made the video, but still I, I watched it and said, man, this is good, but I obviously can't post this without asking for the explicit permission of the auction house. So I made a few phone calls over there and they weren't really sure. They wanted me to talk to the owner. So I drove up there to talk to him and he told me in no uncertain terms, absolutely not. You cannot film in here. They have special policies to protect all of their clients, which honestly I kind of expected, which is why I asked. So that being said, guys, it was a great video and you're never going to see it. It's going to be the long lost lunch money comics video. Still, I can show you guys the comic books that I bought and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Actually, I can show you one clip. Hold on. Here it is. That's it. That's all I can show you. Just me with my paddle to prove that I was in an auction house bidding on things. But bid on things I did and I won two comic book lots that I absolutely can show you. Uh, like I said, the first ones, I had no idea what I won and we kind of joked about it afterwards because the reason no one bid on it is because no one really collects it. What am I talking about? Well, I won seven issues of Blackhawk. I hear some of you asking, what is Blackhawk? Well, at one point in time, it was one of the most popular comic book series dating back to the golden age. In fact, uh, it was one of the very few continuously published uh, comic books all the way from the golden age into the silver age. Uh, and basically, um, Blackhawk is a group of World War II pilots in a group called Blackhawk led by a man named Blackhawk. Um, you know, and again, people love these comic books. They even competed with like Superman. And, uh, and then they sort of fell out of fashion uh, when we got to the Silver Age, which is when all of these books are from. They're all from the early 60s. So um, some of them are in good shape, some of them are not. I got them for $20. There was also a auction house premium of 20%. So 25 bucks got me seven books. Probably not worth it, but I'll show them to you right now. Here's my favorite one. We get this cool starfish man. Uh, this one's kind of neat too. Little, uh, again, little sea monster kind of creature from the Black Lagoon right there. Cool robot. And now we have some that are getting in worse and worse shape. This one uh, is really falling apart, especially on the spine. I actually found some extra like 
comic book pieces like to other comic books like Jimmy Olsen's mixed into this one and then this one right here you can kind of see has a subscription fold going right down the middle uh so definitely not worth the 25 bucks I got them for but uh, I think they're still pretty cool and again it was the first comic books I ever won at an auction so I'll always remember them for that reason but the other lot that I won, I absolutely did intend to bid on them. When we were scoping out the books in the beginning, I said, hey, I want these two books and I bet I can get them pretty cheap. So when they went up for auction, a guy in the front row bid on them. I counterbid and I won them for $25 with the buyer's premium. I got it for 31 bucks. What two books did I get? Well, the first one is this. This is Flash number 204. It's from 1971. Not a key as far as I know, but it is a Neil Adams cover and it's in fantastic shape. Very high grade and I thought it was really cool. But this isn't the reason why I wanted this lot. It's actually the next book. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a little while, I'm really into the Spectre lately. I've been trying to collect a lot of Silver Age Spectre. So you'll see this is why I wanted these two books. This is DC Showcase Presents number 64. It's from 1966. Awesome Murphy Anderson cover. And this is the third appearance of the Silver Age Spectre. It's also the first appearance of the antagonist who is Ace Chance. But still, I got it because it's early Spectre and it's in really good shape. In fact, both of these books are on high grade. And I think for $31, I think I pretty much got uh, my money's worth. So yeah, even though I didn't win any of the really big comic book lots, I'm still pretty happy with what I got. And it was a really great experience, especially with all the other guys I was there with. And I definitely hope to go to more of these in the future, even though I couldn't film. Sorry, guys. Uh, but I promise if I go to more of these in the future and uh, test my luck, if I win anything else, I'll make sure to share with you guys first. Okay, so next up we have some comic books that I got on eBay. I get lots of comic books online, but I don't talk about them on my channel, probably because I don't feel myself opening the packages, but still I picked a good sampling of stuff I got over the last month that I wanted to share with all of you. This is Web of Spider-Man number 36. It's from 1987, another book written by Jerry Conway, art by Alex Soviak, and this is the first appearance of the Spider-Man villain, Tombstone. Um, why did I get the first appearance of Tombstone? Well, it's simple. I've talked in the past about how much I like the Marvel trading cards of the early 90s and how I always want to collect the first appearances of the guys in those cards. Well, you got it. Here's Tombstone's card from Series 2, and this is his full first appearance. But the thing is, I actually already have this comic book. I have several of these books. The reason I got another one was that this was in a sequence of three comic books that I got on eBay. I also got number 35 and number 37. They were all really cheap. They were all like, I think, $10 uh, for all of them. Um, and they were in much higher grade than the one I had. So I was happy to pick all of them up as a lot. Um, and again, first appearance of a Spider-Man villain. Now, he did show up in the Into the Spider-Verse, the first movie as a henchman to the Kingpin. I love that take on Tombstone. I thought he was really cool. Uh, but after I got this book, I recently found out that there are rumors that he will be the villain or a villain in that Sony movie, El Muerto, that they are making. Um, I don't know anything about that. I got it because I have the card and I'm happy to add another high grade copy of the first appearance of Tombstone to my collection. So next up, we have a pretty cool book, guys. Uh, I'm a huge X-Men fan. I say it all the time. I couldn't get through this list without a couple of cool X-Men books, and that's what we have here. Here is X-Men number 96 from 1975, written, of course, by Chris Claremont, art by Dave Cockrum, although the cover is done by Maurice Severin and Sal Buscema, and this is known as the first appearance of Moira McTaggart. Moira McTaggart is a longtime human ally of the X-Men and sometimes love interest to Professor Xavier. She was portrayed uh, in the X-Men movies by two different actresses, most recently by Rose Byrne. Um, and although she's a human and she's been in X-Men comics since 1975, it was only very recently revealed in the Jonathan Hickman take on the X-Men that Moira McTaggart is actually a mutant with a pretty crazy mutant power in that every time she dies, she is reborn and resets the timeline at the time of her birth. Um, there are all sorts of twists and turns in that story revolving around her that I don't want to spoil for anyone who haven't read it. You definitely should read that run if you haven't already. But from an X-Men fan standpoint, Moira is a big, important character to their entire mythos and their history, and I really needed to have this book. So I'm still chipping away at my Chris Claremont run. Um, pretty much the only ones I need left now are all the ones in like the high 90s, low 100s. I'm getting really close. So this is a really important addition to my X-Men Chris Claremont run. Now I want it on a low bid on eBay, I think for $75 with shipping, which is a pretty good deal. Um, there is one flaw with it. Uh, right here, you see a chip in the upper corner, but that's it. It's a beautiful book otherwise, and I can totally live with this uh, at a $75 price tag. So there you go, guys. Uh, X-Men number 96, first appearance of Moira McTaggart. So this next comic book was also written by Chris Claremont also has a Dave Cockrum cover and features the first appearance of one of the most famous X-Men characters of all time. And it's not an X-Men book. What book am I talking about? It is this. 
Ms. Marvel number 18 from 1978, and this is the first full appearance of the villain Mystique. Mystique is a very cool femme fatale assassin, shape changer, variously depicted as an arch rival, an arch foe to the X-Men, but also sometimes as a begrudging ally. Certainly in the movies, they played fast and loose uh, with her membership with the X-Men. I like her because she's the mother of my favorite superhero of all time, Nightcrawler. Now, I said this is her first full appearance. She actually appears uh, in the center folio of this book in her full blue skin, you know, white outfit that everyone knows and loves. But she actually is considered to have two cameos in number 16 and 17, although in both of those cameos, you don't see her in her blue form. She's just disguised as somebody else. So obviously, this is really the first time you see Mystique as she is. Now, there's a really interesting story about why she appears in this book. So Chris Claremont, like I said, wrote this, and his original intent was that Mystique would be a you know arch rival to Ms. Marvel. But this series only lasted 23 issues, and the whole storyline with uh, Mystique and whoever her like big boss was um, sort of just went away until Chris Claremont had a chance to bring Mystique back. And he did that in the storyline Days of Future Past, X-Men 141. She reappears uh, with the new Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. And uh, he even found a way to make her sort of an arch rival to Carol Danvers' Ms. Marvel because her uh, stepdaughter, Rogue, steals Ms. Marvel's powers on Mystique's command. So uh, as an X-Men lover, I had to have this book. I've been looking at for it for a long time. This is in really high grade. And amazingly, I got it on a low bid for $90. And I used credit card points, so it cost me nothing. Normally, in this high grade, guys, it's at least a $150 book. I was ecstatic when I won this. I couldn't believe I got it. So I'm very happy to add the first appearance of Mystique and another great Chris Claremont creation to my collection. So the rest of the comic books in this video, I got all at the same location, and that is his and her comics in Greenfield, Massachusetts. I've talked about this comic shop a million times on my channel. It's fantastic. There are excellent wall books, and there is a great owner there named Nishan that I have a great rapport with. And uh, I like to go up there and just chat with him and just like oogle over all the amazing wall books he has. But in this case, he actually contacted me. See, I did a video not that long ago where my sister got a huge collection of comic books from Portland, Oregon, flew all the way here to Massachusetts. Uh, we got to go through them. And uh, yeah, there were some great comic books in there. I'll definitely put a link to that video right here. But there were a lot of war books in that collection that I really didn't know what to do with. Well, Nishan contacted me and said, hey, all of those Sergeant Rock books that you have, he actually knew someone who could be into them. And if I brought them up to the store, he would let me trade for something. So that's what I did. I didn't really care about these war books. You know, I brought them all up there. He got to look through them and we came up with a price, you know, of what I could get in trade. And I started looking at these amazing wall books and sure enough, saw one that I've wanted for a long time. And it is this. This is The Avengers number 70. It's from 1969, written by Roy Thomas, art by Sal Buscema. And this is the first full appearance of the team, the Squadron Sinister. Now, the Squadron Sinister is a pastiche of the DC's Justice League characters. So we have Hyperion, who's basically Superman. We have um, Dr. Spectrum, who is kind of like Green Lantern. We have the Wizard, who's the Flash. And we have Nighthawk, who's basically Batman. And you see them fighting the Avengers because this is sort of like the evil version of this team. And they would later go on to have a heroic version of this team called the Squadron Supreme and add other members such as a pastiche of Wonder Woman. So um, I've always liked this team. I've always thought the idea behind them was really cool, but I've never had this book. But what I did have was two copies of this right here. Uh, this is the Mighty Avengers number 69. This is the first appearance of the team in Cameo. They show up on basically the last page is when you first see them. It's also the first appearance of uh, the Grandmaster. And also you have an appearance by Kang right here. So I have a couple of copies of this book. I've always liked it, but I needed that next one, the full first appearance with them right on the cover. So here it is. And hey guys, I love trading for comic books, um, especially one that I've wanted for a long time. And especially with books I didn't really care about. And you can see here, this is in pretty high grade. I mean, uh, it's a white cover. It would show a lot of, you know, dirt and grime, but it really doesn't. Uh, it's in fantastic shape. And I'm very happy to finally add uh, Avengers number 70, first appearance of the Sinister Supreme and all of these characters to my Avengers collection. So we finally come to the final book, and I definitely think I saved the best for last. This is absolutely my favorite comic book I'm going to show to you guys today. I also got it at His and Her Comics, but I didn't trade for it. I bought it outright. I've been looking for this book for a long time. I've been telling everyone I know to keep their eyes open for it. So when I mentioned it to Nishan at His and Her Comics, you can imagine my surprise when he said, oh, I have a copy right back here. 
What book am I talking about? I'm talking about this. This is X-Men number 58, also from 1969, also written by Roy Thomas, but this one has a very famous, iconic Neil Adams cover depicting Alex Summers as Havoc for the first time. So Alex Summers is the younger brother of Scott Summers, Cyclops, and he first appeared as just regular old Alex Summers in X-Men number 54. Well, this is the first comic book, number 58, that he shows up in costume as the superhero Havoc. Uh, amazing Neil Adams cover. He didn't do many X-Men books, guys, so that makes this even more special. Um, I collect X-Men books, obviously, and I definitely collect first appearances of X-Men, so I needed the first appearance of Havoc in costume, and I love Neil Adams. So this book was high on my list. Now, I don't remember the exact price Nishan had on this. It was like in the high hundreds, and um, I thought that was actually a pretty good price. He was willing to come down because, you know, it's me. We have a good relationship. But when I was inspecting it, I found out that ever so barely this top staple is detached from the cover, and Nishan, what a guy, sold this to me for $100 which was a fantastic deal. I've been looking for this comic book for a while, guys. I see it in much worse condition um, for a lot more money. And uh, even with that slight detachment, you guys can tell, look how sharp it is. I mean, it looks fantastic. Uh, not only did he sell it to me for $100, he even threw in a little bonus. He even threw in a New Mutants graphic novel. Um, I've been telling everyone I've been looking for the first printing of this book. I have a second printing. Well, this one right here, it's not first printing, it's sixth printing, uh, but still, he threw it in uh, for free, and uh, that's pretty cool because it's like a high-quality reader. Um, so I'm happy to have uh, this first appearance of the New Mutants graphic novel as a bonus, but uh, really, this is the prize, guys. Um, super, super happy to add this to my first X-Men appearances into my X-Men collection in general. Keep an eye out for this book, guys. I think it's iconic, I think it's beautiful, and I think it's a worthy addition to any Marvel and X-Men collector. So there you go, guys. That was my comic book roundup video. I hope to do more of these in the future. I just don't want to miss any opportunities to share really cool comic books with all of you. Head on down to the comments and let me know which of the things you saw today you like the best. Let's start with these toys. Any of you play with these cool X-Men figures in the early 90s? I would love to hear from you. Um, let me know. Oh, there they all go. You let me know what you think of my favorite one, the first appearance of Havoc in costume. There you go, guys. I hope you keep hunting for comic books in strange and unusual places. Clearly, I find them all over the place. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.